Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. We thank God for another opportunity the Lord given me on this Wednesday. Praise God. It is Bible Study Wednesday, July the 10th and 2024. And again, I am Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama, once again declaring to you that Jesus Christ, he is the only answer to the problem that we face today. I offer you a solution, not only to our personal problems, but pray God to the world, the problems of the world today. Amen. We have only to put our trust in the Lord and pray God we will see a great change, not only in our lives, but in the world today. If the world would just bow down and give honor and praise to our great creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is all we have to do, praise God, in order to see the change, changes that take place that we need to see in our lives today. Amen. But once again, we're looking at the book of Luke. We're, this is our study uh, book for this lesson, as it was for our Sunday. This is part two. We're continuing on in part two of this study. Luke 3, and we're going to look at verse 1 again, verse 1, 2, and 3. Once again, I do encourage you to get your Bibles. Not only your Bibles, get your tablets, your paper, your pencil, get all your tools together. Praise God, just as if you were getting ready to go to work. You're a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly able to divide the Word of God. And it's important, praise God, that we study together, look together, and praise God, copy down uh, the scripture that God has placed upon my heart. Luke 3, and we began reading at verse 1 there. It says, now in the uh, 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrad of Galilee, his brother Philip was tetrad of Adirea, and the regions of Trachonitis and Lysanias, the tetrad of Abilene. Anus, in Caiaphas, being the high priest, it says the word of God came unto John during this time, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of our sins. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. I thank you, Lord, once again for giving me an opportunity to come. Lord, and to share the words that you placed in my heart. And Lord, I realize once again that it's not uh, by might, my might, my power, but it is through your Holy Spirit, by your Spirit, Lord, that this great work is to be accomplished. Now, Lord, you speak. You speak through me, Father. Speak to the hearts of those whom you bring to hear this broadcast today. Break up the fallow ground. Prepare their hearts to receive the seed of your word. And Lord God, we pray that it may bring forth fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. And in the end, when it's all over, you get the glory. You get all the praise, all the honor, Lord. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So now, part two here, uh, we're going to use that same subject that we used on Sunday. Christ says it is time to repent. And this is what uh, the message that John brought, according to that uh, uh, verse there in verse 3, and said that John came into all the country about Jordan. He was preaching the baptism of repentance. Important that you understand John's baptism was a baptism of repentance and not a baptism of salvation. It's important that we understand that salvation comes only through Christ, through Christ. But he was paving the way for salvation for each and every one of us, praise God, that repent of our sins. But now Christ says it's time to repent. That's our subject once again. Part two, it is time. It is time for you, me, and all of us to uh, repent of our sins and be saved. And praise God, it don't stop there. Uh, we are just in a repentant mode, mode to seem like it all of our lives. But there is a repentance unto salvation, number one. Then we go on from there because uh, John said, we all, praise God, do we all sin, that we have come short of the glory of God. So now we just got to keep on repenting. But now that repenting is to keep our fellowship 
with the Lord, to stay in that daily fellowship with the Lord. But John's baptism paved the way for a repentance that would bring to us salvation. Amen. Now, and again, in this part too, well, we want to we want to look a little bit farther and a little bit deeper into the mission of John the Baptist and uh, what we as believers can, what can we learn? What can we learn from John, God's interaction here with John the Baptist? What can we really learn? Now, in that fourth verse of this same Luke 3, if you look on down the fourth verse, uh, it is said that uh, John's mission was to prepare the way of the Lord. Let's look at that. Look at the fourth verse now. You should be still there in Luke 3. Just scroll down to 4. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, that's uh, Isaiah, uh, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So John, praise God, his mission was what? To prepare the way of the Lord, praise God, to get the people uh, hearts ready to receive uh, the word of God from our creator himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. But now, the question that we want to explore today uh, in this lesson here is how did John prepare the way for Christ? How did he do that? We want to kind of get a good understanding of that because uh, out of all you're getting, the Bible said we need to get an understanding. And I believe many people lack a real understanding. Though. So now, how did John really uh, prepare the way up for Christ to come? How did he do that? Well, the answer is by what? By preparing the people. Preparing the people uh, to receive him. Preparing the people, praise God, by, by teaching them about their need to repent their need for repentance, amen, and the evidence that it will produce, huh? praise God, it will produce evidence there, uh, which generally speaking is what? It's a changed life. It's a changed life. If any man be in Christ, the Bible says he's a new creature. All things have what? Passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Amen. So now John was to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. In other words, he prepared the people, right? Teaching them uh, that they need to uh, repent of their sins before Christ can enter into their lives, into their hearts. But now, in addition to Jesus Christ and John, praise God, and Joseph, praise God, I am John the Baptist here, and Joseph also, I think we mentioned in the last lesson that there was a, 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 a parallel uh, in that uh, between these men in that uh, they began their work at 30 years of age. We mentioned Jesus, we mentioned uh, John, we mentioned um, uh, Joseph, and now Ezekiel, he can be added to the group. They all began their ministry work at 30 years of age, which is what God had told Moses must uh, be done to those who entered the priesthood. They could not be, uh, uh, they could not enter until they were 30 years of age. So now Ezekiel joined this group, uh, this elite group here of men that seems to mirror the life of Christ. Uh, and uh, and like John, uh, Ezekiel was called to warn the one, the people of their sins and to call the people to repentance, to call the people to repentance. Amen. That's so important there. And uh, look at Ezekiel now. Let's look at Ezekiel now. We add him uh, to this uh, group of uh Praise God, very special men that uh, seems to um, uh, mimic uh, the life of Christ here, more or less. And uh, uh, Ezekiel 33, and we're going to look at verse 7 there. Let's look at 7. Ezekiel 33 and verse 7. We'll start there. And let's see, I got it. I think, I, yes, here we are. We got it here. Look what it says there. It says in verse 7, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee 
to uh, I had set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. You see, get thirty three seven now. He said, therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. That's what the Lord says. You go hear the word at my mouth from my mouth, and you are to warn them from me. Verse eight, he says, and when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, his sin, but his blood will I require at thy hand. If you don't warn him, Ezekiel, look at the uh, 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 number of uh, verse nine there. He said, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, in his sin, but thou hast delivered thy soul. You have done what I've told you to do. So we see the importance of the message, the calling of God's preachers, God's preachers now, to warn the people. Amen. And warning is not very comfortable uh, to uh, many people, uh, but this is what uh, he was called to do. But now, uh, even then, yesterday and today, we as God's ministers, we must warn the people of the evil that's in our midst, and we must, in our midst and in the hearts of people, and call them to repentance uh, from their sins. We, we must do that. That's our calling. And, and if, we are, as, if we as ministers, and, and just not just ministers of God, but now we're called to be witnesses also, right? Amen. So when you witness to them, you warn them also of their sins, but especially those who are called as God's called ministers. Praise God. And if we do not point out to the people their sins, if we do not point out their sins and call them to repentance, then you know, we're not necessarily going to lose our salvation, but now uh, we're going to lose our reward. I said we'll, we'll lose our, our reward in heaven if we do not uh, charge to keep our health and a God to glorify. And that means we first tell them that they must repent of their sins. That's our calling. Amen. And sad to say, you don't, you don't hear much preaching of this type today. No, you don't. Praise God, because people, uh, men are preaching today for popularity, to gain popularity and financial gain. But now, look at the book of Hebrews then, 13. You copy these scriptures down now. Look with me. We are studying the word of God on this Wednesday Bible study night. Praise God. Look at uh, Luke. Uh, no, no, Hebrews. We'll look at find Hebrews. Let's find Hebrews 13 here. And uh, it says here uh, in 13, 17th verse, obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them and submit yourselves, for they minister, uh, they, the ministers that is, they watch for your souls, hmm? as they that must give account. Yes, preachers, you're going to have to give an account for what you have fed God's people. Amen. Did you feed them the food that God prescribed for them, or did you feed them food that would uh, uh, be advantageous to your financial benefit? What did you feed them? But now, look what, uh, look what Paul says now. He says, for they, talking about the ministers, watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So now we have to give an account. We have to give an account. Ministers, you're going to have to give an account. And to a certain extent, we who are just ordinary, <clears throat> saved witnesses, ambassadors, we'll have to give an account too, because if we don't give out the message that God has laid out in his word for us, very plainly, amen, God will not condemn us for uh for other men's sins. Now, he don't condemn us for the sins they're committed, but now, if we who are called of God, if we fail to warn the people, warn them, huh? 
and failed to call the people uh, uh, to faith, to faith in Christ. Huh? Called them to faith in Christ, repentance of their sins. If we fail to do this, then again, those of us that are indwelt by the power of God, the Spirit of God lives in us. If we fail to do this, what we do? We grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible said very plain, we're not to grieve. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Where about we have been indwelt? We're not to grieve him. The message is clear. The message of the Old Testament, the prophets of God. Repent, repent, repent. Why is it today that we don't hear much of that today? Mm, it's not popular, and people don't digest it very easily, do they? Huh? But, uh, but the people today are just as, praise God, uh, wicked or uh, more wicked, praise God, than the people uh, in the days of uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and, and Isaiah who constantly tried to turn people off from their sin. But the, the world today is worse, I believe it's worse today uh, than it was at that time. Praise God. I mean, uh, our government is against the word of God. They don't want the commandments. They don't want anything that seems to reflect about God, but yet they have uh, embraced the devil's days and all the other uh, uh, celebrations more or less here. But so, in other words, we're living in a very wicked time here. Praise God, more wicked than it was during the days of Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah. And God's message then was, was what? Repent. God's message then was repent. And God's message today is still repent. Huh? It's the forerunner. It's the forerunner message before you can, praise God, experience the salvation of the Lord. And the message has not changed. The message has not changed. The messengers. They have changed their message, though, but God's message is the same. Hmm? Praise God, the, the prosperity message today that dominates our, <clears throat> our pulpit and uh, the healing messages and uh, the God want to bless you messages and I see God doing this for you and doing that for you. Praise God. You know, what they what you're doing, what preachers, what you're really doing, you're putting the cart before the horse. You trying to you trying to give out God's blessing before these people get saved. These people need to be saved. That's all it is to it. Amen. Praise God. Uh Paul says in Romans 3:19 that uh, that all the world uh, are guilty before God. Let all the world become guilty before God. It's what Paul says in Romans 3 and 19. Praise God. Oh guilty before God, and all must repent before we can be saved. Amen. That's an absolutely must. But again, like I say, preachers today, uh, they're not following the script that God has laid out. They're not following. The message is not the same. Pre pre preachers today are freely passing out God's blessings to the wolves and the goats Hmm? That's what that's what that's what that's what they're doing. They're just giving blessings out uh, to wolves and to goats, and therefore they uh, uh, they, they these the preachers today need to take heed to God's word. God's word is clear. God's word is very plain. Uh, in Matthew fifteen twenty six, uh, the Lord says it's not uh, it's not right or it's not meat. He used the word meat. M e it's not meat or it's not right. It's not correct to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now, that's what the Lord says. You're taking, you want to give God's blessings to Christ to the dogs. These people don't know the Lord. They never repented of their sins. They live in the same lifestyle that they ever, that were living before. But yet you preachers have the audacity to stand before God and issue out God's bread, God's blessings. Hmm? Praise God. The bread, the bread that this woman, uh, this woman that uh, Christ made this remark to, that it wasn't proper for me to take my children's bread. She came for healing. She came for healing for her daughter. That's why she wanted healing for her daughter. Huh? So now Christ looked at her. She's not a saved woman. She's not even a Jew. And she, Christ looked at her and said, well, you know, it's not right. It's not proper. It's not me. For me to take my children and pray. So now, uh, healing, she wanted healing, right? So healing, according to Christ here, and prosperity, mm, and blessings, praise God, are for Christ's 
saved and baptized believers yeah? and, and those who have repented of their sins. Praise God. This is the bread. This bread that Christ gives is for his children now. But like you say, uh, she left with a blessing because she was determined to put her trust in the Lord. Praise God. And she left there with a blessing. But now repentance is the first step to salvation. Let, let, let's be, let us be clear with this now. Repentance is the first step to salvation. Hmm? You cannot skip over repentance. You cannot skip over repentance and, uh, and not even believers baptism. You cannot skip over these things, but that's exactly what's being done today. Pray God in our churches, we are skipping over uh, the important steps, you know, it's like, um, you know, when we play baseball, uh, the, the, the procedure was if you, if you hit the ball, you go first base first, huh? And if you can make it through to second and third and praise God, if you can still all the way home, good, but you can't go from first, from, 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 you cannot go from, um, from, 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 from uh, the, 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 the batting station there, uh, from the mound, you can't go from the mound directly to third base and then come right back into the uh, the home plate there. You just can't do that. You just can't do that. But that's what you're doing today. And the preachers are aiding and abetting many in this wrong procedure. But no, you can't do that. Uh, repentance is first. Repentance is first. And we as uh, uh, God's people uh, should make sure that we make this very plain to the people because repentance means a turnaround, a complete turnaround, a different life, a different conversation, a different uh, 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 fellowship, a different everything. It means that, but uh, it, it's not being um, made plain today. Repentance is the only way back to our God. Hmm? Adam had a good thing going. He messed it up, amen, but God has made a way. God has paid, made a way for us to return to him, hmm? and that's through repentance. It's the only way. John the Baptist came preaching uh, repentance, not to salvation, praise God, but repentance from our sins, and this is what he preached, you know, but now in that book of Ezekiel, uh, if we look back there again now, uh, uh, 33, and uh, look back at 33 again, and we're going to skip down. We'll go down to 10 this time. Let's go down to verse 10 there. We're going to continue reading in Ezekiel, uh, this man that God called to warn the people. Look what he says in verse 10 there. Come on, look with me now. Verse 33 and 10, Ezekiel, therefore thou, son of man, the Lord says to him, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? How should we live? How should we live? How do we live now? How do we live? Say unto them, verse 11, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure. Say unto them, Hmm? Lord tell Ezekiel, say unto them, as I live, said the Lord God, I have no pleasure. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. No pleasure. But, but, what, what's, what's the but, Lord? But that the wicked turn, that's a repentance there, turn from his ways mm, and live. There's got to be a turn in your life. There's got to be an after and there's got to be a before. Can you see up before how you were, how you are, and how you are now? Hey? He said, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye, he says, turn ye, turn ye, over and over, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. And why will, for why will you die? O house of Israel, why would you die? The Lord says, turn. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I don't want to see you die. I don't want to see you go to hell. That's what the Lord said. I don't want, but you got to turn though. You got to turn. You got to change. There got to be a change in your life. And I thank God today that there has been a great change in my life for 51 years, 51, almost 52 years, a great change. And I'm thankful to the Lord for he is the one that gives me the power to repent. 
And I thank God for that. Amen. To see myself as I really was. Mm, I'm thankful today. But now, sad to say again, most churchgoers, most churchgoers today are looking for a good feeling. That's what they go to church for, a good feeling. So they can dance and clap, and, and I have no problem with that. I dance. I, I clap, you know. I move, you know, because when I'm praising God, amen. But now, most people, that's basically what they go for, the music. Mm -hmm. And today, they have uh, kind of added a lot of other uh, 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 condiments uh, of music and, and uh, praise God, all kind of light lights and all kind of things. Amen. They've added, praise God, to make people feel good. Huh? So people are looking for a feel good feeling and not a changed life. Not a changed life. Not put their lives under God's microscope of his word and have God to show them what they need to do in order to draw closer to him. This is not what most people are looking for today. And I blame the preachers for that. I blame the preachers for that. Amen. They don't want to. People don't want to hear. They won't hear about their uh, uh, the need for them to repent. They don't want to hear that, huh? They don't want to hear about changing the way they live. No, people don't want to hear that. Praise God. And again, sadly, you preachers out there, you preachers today are the very uh, ones that are responsible. You 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 are trying to accommodate the people. Hmm? You're trying to accommodate them. The message of repentance. Uh, to them, you know that is not popular. You know it's not popular. And, and to you, it is not profitable. Mm. It's not popular with the people, the message of repentance. And to the preacher, you know that it's not profitable. Amen. But now, thank God, John wasn't concerned. <laughs> he wasn't concerned uh, with what they wanted to hear. Only that they hear the truth. Mm. The truth. But the truth is, it can be convincing, uh, convicting, that is. It can be convicting, can it? Huh? The truth will convict you, uh, especially when, like John, when it insults the integrity, <laughs> the integrity of its listeners. You know, bougies, you got people think they are, uh, you know, it's, they are important people. And John didn't care about that. He didn't care about that. A charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. And that means the truth must be told. Look at Luke 3. Oh, John, you, you ought to, John, you could be a little bit more diplomatic in your approach, couldn't you? Praise God, you're like, a, like an elephant in a china shop here. Uh, look at uh, Luke 3 there in 7 now. <clears throat> 3 and 7. It <clears throat> said, Then said he, John, to the, <clears throat> to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, he called the people uh, sn snakes, serpents, O generation of vipers, you bunch of snakes. Who had warned you to flee from the wrath of come to come? Who told you to who what you what you what you doing out here in the wilderness with me? Who what what has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And there is a wrath to come, brothers and sisters. Christ came to uh to help you and me to not to face that wrath, not to be in that group that would face the wrath of God. But now it's very obvious that John, with these kind of tactics here, very Ruthless uh, generation of vipers, you snakes! Now it's obvious to me that John wasn't a member of the ministers' uh, 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 council and association of that day. He, he couldn't have been. Hmm? Oh no! Or uh, maybe they uh, forgot to tell John that he wasn't going to draw a crowd preaching uh, the whole truth. Yeah, I mean they may come for a minute, but it's going to thin out once they hear what you are selling or what you are preaching. Amen. See, truth is a lonely. Truth is indeed a lonely warrior. Truth is. John preached the truth. But today's preachers are mostly interested in drawing a crowd. Drawing a crowd is what they're concerned about because the crowd equals more money, more prestige for this egotistical maniac of a preacher. Yes, amen. Saving souls is not on their list. It's not, it has no priority on their list. 
Amen. But thank God for John. Thank God for preachers today that will stand up and preach the truth. Amen. Praise God. We will preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank God for you. Amen. But John knew that most of the people that came to hear his message, hmm, that uh, crowd that came out of curiosity, they came basically because they were curious, right? Amen. And they had no intention whatsoever of changing their ways. And we'll see that uh, as we go along. Uh, those uh, the religious Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't even want them. No, they didn't get no baptized. No, no baptism for them. Praise God. But they had no intention of changing. John knew this. So what John did was what? He destroyed or set out to destroy their sense of confidence and their sense of importance. Tear down, tear it down is what he set out to do, calling them snakes and serpents and praise God. See, many of the Jews, as well as church folk today, yes, think they are destined to go to heaven simply because of their blue blood pedigree. We be Abraham's children, they says. Uh, see, the Jews thought that because they were children of Abraham, that they were destined for heaven anyhow. And people will tell you, I know I'm going to heaven, living like I had a cat, just come out of the nightclub with a, looking like a hoochie mama, and yet you know you're going to heaven. Oh boy, somebody been deceived. But the Jews, they because, because they were Abraham's seed, they just knew that they were a, a, a shoe-in for heaven. And church folks are like that today. Hmm? Just because you grew up in church. You were baptized. I was baptized by Reverend so and so long, long, long time ago. I grew up in church. My father, he held, he was a deacon in the church. He held our position. My mom was on the mother's board. Blah, 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 blah. You think that's because of that? Your pedigree. Well, the Jews thought it. And many people in church today. You no, know, you could, just because you have grew and grown up in church all your life, that does not mean that you're going to heaven. Hmm? Praise God. As a matter of fact, you can you can you you can sleep in the, in the building there, or praise God, uh, uh, every every night for uh, the rest of your life, and that don't mean you're going to heaven. Praise God. Look at Luke three again. Luke three, our teaching text again. Look at three and eight there. Three and eight, and the uh, Lord uh, through John here, he told them to bring forth therefore Luke three eight, bring forth therefore fruit, evidence worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For John said, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children of Abraham. You're not special. There's nothing special about you. Nothing. Look at verse nine. And now also the ax. John said the ax. God done put the ax. The ax is laid unto the root of the trees. God is take, God is putting the ax to the root of the trees. Mm, every tree, therefore, you talk about human beings, talk about people now, every tree, therefore, which bringing not forth good fruit, I'm talking about evidence of repentance, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, that's what, that's what the Lord says here uh, through John. There's a fire. Yeah, there's a fire. And those who have not trusted the Lord will end up in that lake of fire. That's the word of God. Amen. Oh, I know you don't hear much of that today. And it seems like I'm, a, I'm, I'm an alien from outer space, don't it? Where where you get all that from? I, I, my pastor don't say nothing like that. I'm sure he don't. I'm sure he don't. Praise God, because he's going to be there with you, more than likely. Now, John was not impressed with those who had uh, religious background, religious professions of faith. He, he wasn't impressed with that. Huh? Praise God. They had all these confessions and professions, but now uh, they did not produce any fruit, though. There were no evidence, no evidence, huh? To, no change in their lives. See, there got to be a change in your life if you're truly been saved by God. You don't do the things you used to do. You don't hang out with the people you used to hang out with. Amen. See, God wants more than just a professional faith. Our confession of professional faith. Huh? God wants to change life. He wants to change life. So now, my question to you today is, has the Lord changed you? Has the Lord changed your life? Hmm? Is there a fruit hmm, on the tree? Or is the Lord 
going to have to put the ax to the tree and cast that tree into the fire. Hmm? Is there a change in your life? Are you bringing forth fruit that shows that you have repented of your sins and placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the question that God is asking you and God is telling me to ask you. Have you really repented of your sins? And the evidence is there to prove it. Hmm? But now, as I close for today, the truth of God is not being preached in 90% of our churches today. No truth. The truth now, in 90%. Not all, there are some, very few, very few. Hmm? The truth of God, it never changes. It never changes. Truth is the same for everyone. Christ is coming back. And I believe it soon. I believe God, I believe the Lord is coming back real soon. And we need to get ready today. Get ready, get ready. We need to get ready for the coming of the Lord. The signs of the time are near us. Mm -hmm. Catastrophe, storms, and uh, people's lives are being uh, upended. And they're having to start all over again. The government against God and against the word of God and, 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 and financially, uh, we are trying to uh, take care of everybody but our people here in this country. It's got the bodies going to fall out here. Yes, it's time. It's time for all men, women, boys, and girls to repent. Uh, we're living in changing times, very crucial times today. And no matter how much money you may have, no matter how much education and how much power, uh, how many uh, possessions that you may have, praise God. God's word today for every one of us is repent. Repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at verse 31. Look at Acts there. I'll tell you what, look at the book of Acts. We're going to look at that. Acts 17 and nah, look at 30. I'm going to back up to 30 there. Acts 17, 30. God's word today is repent. That's God's word for you, for me. Hmm? There's a repentance unto salvation. That's the repentance. That's what Christ describes in the, at the Lord's Supper there. And uh, when uh, he was washing uh, the feet of old Peter there, uh, washing the feet of Thomas and, and uh, washing all their feet. He, he, washed, he was of washing feet, but he made it plain that uh, he didn't have to wash old Thomas and all over because he just need to get your feet washed. And we repent unto salvation when we first get saved. But now we do a lot of more repenting after that because you got to get your feet got to be washed. Huh? Praise God. As we sojourn in this world, we're going to sin. We sin every day. All would have sin. But Acts 1730, look what it says there. 1730. And the time of this ignorance, God winked at it. There was a time God winked at the ignorance of man. But now since we're so educated, since now we so uh, bougie and we are so rich, hmm, I think God, don't, he's not winking no more. Look what it says. In, in, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at But now God commanded all men everywhere to repent. He's not winking. He mean business. God said repent. In the 31, he said, because he hath appointed a day. God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man in whom he hath ordained. That man that John says he's coming, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Huh? Praise God. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. Hmm. Today, right today. Cleanup is taking place in the Virgin Islands and the islands down there where that uh, powerful storm come through and uh, look like some of those villages were completely ripped apart there. And people, can you put yourself in these people's place? They have no nowhere to stay now, nowhere to stay. Financially, uh, these little islands are not very rich, but 
they have nowhere to stay and, and the poor people are suffering there. Texas here, look at Texas here. Uh, did a pretty bad job on Texas in that Houston area, surrounding areas there. Houses completely demolished, businesses completely gone, jobs completely halted for, and material possessions completely gone, destroyed by this powerful storm. And many of these people are saying out loud and then to themselves, many are saying, why, Lord? Why me, Lord? Why me? Hmm? When we have worked so hard, Lord, we worked hard to accumulate these things, to, uh, to buy a house for our families. And why, Lord? Uh, why, 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 Lord? Praise God. Well, as I close, I'm going to let Christ answer that question, why? Why? Why you? And not me. Hmm? He does it by pointing out two very tragic situations that took place around Jerusalem. The people knew well about it. He answered it, your question and their question. Luke 13, as we close, Luke 13, look at one. Why? Why these things? Why? Listen to Jesus now. He points them to two incidents that they were familiar with. And he says here, there was present, Luke 13, 1, there were present at that season some that told him, told Christ, of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate, old Pontius Pilate, had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all of the Galileans because they suffered these things? Verse 3, Christ says, I tell you, no, no, nay, no. But except you repent, oh, it could happen to you. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Then he goes to another situation that they knew, they knew about. Mm. Christ says in verse 4, Of those 18 people upon whom the tower of Salaam fell and slew them, do you think that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? Christ says, I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We're not exempt. You're not exempt. We need to repent. Except you repent. You may be next. I may be next. Hmm? Lord says, it's time to repent. Let's pray. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this time of sharing your word with your people. Now, Lord, I pray you speak, Lord. I pray the power, the unction of the Holy Spirit might move in the hearts and minds of those whom you bring to this broadcast today. Lord, give us a heart. Give us a repentant heart today. And that we may cry out to you, Lord. For we don't know what today, tomorrow may bring. But we only know who holds today and tomorrow. In the hall of his hand. Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you receive this word. Praise God from the Lord. Praise God. If you receive God's word as the Lord has spoken uh, to me, through me, again, pray for me. Will you pray for me? What, 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 I want you, what do I want you to pray for, for me? Pray that God will allow me to continue to preach and teach his word, that he'll continue to speak to me and through me as unworthy as I am. Pray for me. Will you pray for me? Then share this gospel. Share this word that God has put on my heart. We can't all preach. We can't all teach. We're not all called to preach and to teach. But we're all called to be witnesses. Now, if you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, you'll share this message. Hmm? And if you feel like you, you're upset here, then that means you might need to go back to the drawing board if this message has caused you to be uneasy. Because hmm? I've told you exactly what God said. And then subscribe. When we come again, you'll be notified. Amen. But now the Lord's will, I don't, 
I'm looking at a part three here because the question was asked. The question was asked by the people, what shall we then do? They were asked a very important question. And the Lord gave some examples, some people he pointed out and what they were doing and what had to stop. So we may have to go a little bit further to part three. And if so, then we'll probably be Friday. Friday, we'll probably bring you that part three. Amen? Where well, Luke is clearly, clearly telling us that there must be evidences. Hmm? You can't talk it. You got to live it. Amen? There must be evidence of our true repentance within our hearts. Amen? But until that time, praise God, you be saved and then be blessed of the Lord. Amen.